What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Happy Monday. We know it's the best day of the week. Start of a new a new week. Hopefully, you guys had a great weekend. It was very eventful. At least here. But hopefully, you guys had a great time with your families. Um, and... Yeah, so let's go ahead and pray. We're going to finish Romans chapter 15 today, and then what's the, uh, we n we're probably not going to start a book right away because this stuff is exhausting. So I'll probably do like 
a few preachings from now to like i don't know friday or something or tomorrow till friday i don't know i'll figure it out but um i know we were talking about exodus i'll, st I'll check in once we are ready to start a new book after romans um then we'll figure it out what book we'll actually get into so yeah hopefully you guys have been enjoying this uh study on the book of romans i know it was a lot it took forever <laughs> i didn't expect that and this is only 15 chapters imagine exodus exodus i think is like 24 26 chapters or something like that but um yeah we'll we'll get into that once we're ready for it um so today's tax day guys if you haven't done your taxes do your taxes before you forget and you're gonna get a penalty and then you're gonna have to do a late filing just a reminder for everybody i'm telling you because i gotta do it <laughs> i'm gonna do it right after this uh this live but let's go ahead and pray guys and then we'll talk for a little bit and get into the study Father God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We glorify you. We praise you for everything that is happening in our lives. Oh, Father, that which is yet to come. Oh, God, we thank you as if it has been done. Oh, Lord, we appreciate you. Oh, Lord, for giving us all the reasons to glorify your father. Many reasons to praise you. Oh, Lord, we thank you for always showing us. Oh, God, that we are loved. Oh, Father, that we are cared for by you, that you are. You pay attention, O oh Father, and when we obey you, O oh God, you demonstrate your faithfulness, O oh Lord, in that obedience. So we thank you for your grace and your mercy and caring for us, O oh God. I pray for your people, O oh Lord, as they connect to this live, O oh Father, that you would give us wisdom, O oh Lord, that you would protect us, that you would help us to study your word, O oh Father, and get deeper on this study, O oh Father. We are coming to the close of the book of Romans. May we learn from you, O oh Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for your people. I present them to you, O oh Father, that you would bless them abundantly, O oh Lord, and in everything that they are going through, O oh Father. May they know that whatever is happening, you are in control. All things are in your hands. Bless our homes, our finances, our marriages, O oh God. Bless us, O oh Father. Remove all distractions in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So hopefully you guys are ready for Romans 15. Um, this weekend was pretty cool. Uh, I got to finally see my boy, David. I took him out for his birthday. His birthday is going to be, uh, his birthday's Wednesday in two days. So I took him out on Saturday to go eat. We had some good food. Let me see if I could show you guys. I took a picture. Where's the picture? Here we go. I had some steak, mashed potatoes, and chicken which is good for me because I don't eat that at the house. Let me see, can you guys see that? We went to a cheesecake, my favorite place to go. <laughs> but we, we enjoyed a, a good time there. It was awesome. Um, you know, we had a good time. I haven't seen him in a, almost a year. That's crazy to think about, but glory to God. You know, I've been praying to the Lord and he he able, he was able to make it happen after praying so long about it. So we had a good time um, together, just catch up. He's 17 on the 17th, which is funny. But anyways, hopefully you guys had a good weekend. Um, yesterday, I went to church and it was a great message by the pastor or his the pastor or the pastora because there's no indication in English that she's a woman, but the pastor I was preaching yesterday, and it was in English, so uh, it was a, good, a great message about getting through the storm and, and just beautiful things, but what caught my attention was one of the songs, man, I've never heard this song by Kim, Kim Walker, right? That's her name, I think. Um, she's not the one that sings the blessing, right? I don't, I don't be knowing. So forgive me for my ignorance, guys. <laughs> I listen to the same, <laughs> the same music all day, every day. I'll be having the, the Spotify on repeat, the same album, the same artist. It's always playing all day long without stop. Even when I'm not listening, it's on mute and it's just running all day long. <laughs> but, um, there's this song that she sings and they sang it at church. And I was like, 
yo, this is such a powerful message. Um, let me let me pull it up real quick. I have posted it on my YouTube community thing. Uh, Stones, Kim Walker, right? Smith. Yeah. So let me see. How can I do this? All right, let me pull it up real quick. So these are the lyrics. Uh, let me turn this off. So this, these are the lyrics. Apparently this released in 2020. I didn't know that at all. But, you know, she's like, find me in the valley standing with my hands held high. The valley will never take my song. Find me in the desert holding on to you for life. The desert will never take my song. And that's so powerful because multiple times in the book of Psalms, the Bible talks about singing a new song for the Lord or put a song on my lips. Oh, God, there's many different Psalms that speak of this idea. And it just reminded me of that, like the desert, no matter what we go through, it can't take away our praise. It can't take away our worship. And that just struck me as so important, so beautiful, because it's like, man, you know, we all are going through it. There's nobody in this world, whether you think that they got it like that or not, or you think that they're in a great position and you're not. Trust and believe everybody out here is struggling. We are all struggling in some type of way. Just know that. But are you going to allow the um, are you going to allow the season to take away the praise from god i i can't bro so as i was listening to it what really caught my attention was the uh the second part i don't know what that's called in the structure of a song i don't know if it's the bridge or what i should know that since my last name is puentes right uh i will praise you i will praise you i won't let the stones cry i won't let the stones cry out i will praise you something in me has to i won't let the stones cry and then this part is really where I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I started crying while worshiping. Find me with the promise dancing where you prophesied, still shouting of everything you've done. High up on the mountain, I was made to testify forever. You will have my song. Oh, forever. You will have my song. And then this part really got to me right here, because this is something that God has always talked to me about. The longer I, uh, the longer the wait, the longer I'll praise. The stronger the pain, the stronger my faith grows. The higher the need, the higher I'll reach. The greater the cost, the more I'll believe. And you guys know that I've always said, the more you're denied, the more you desire what you are being denied. And when I was listening to these lyrics, it was like striking my heart so heavy, man. It was incredible guys i have my ac on so let me know if it's too loud if you can hear it i'll turn it off but um um what was i saying i don't remember <laughs> oh like the more you're um the more you're denied the more you desire things right and what it made me think about is absence makes the heart grow fonder and you know i always keep it real with you guys about the promises of god that he made to me and stuff and it feels that way it's like i've been i've been trying to articulate what is this sentiment that i've been feeling these last two to three weeks because i've been feeling like amazing in regards to the things that i have been experiencing all that god has been doing but there's something that's happening in my heart that is like i'm longing for the promise of god and i feel like today as i was meditating on those lyrics and what is the stat the what is the state of my heart and that just kept on growing in my mind like it was it was deep in my heart and my soul that absence makes the heart grow fonder and what i desire is companionship and the reason why i got there is because <laughs> i'm like yo i've been having the desire i've, I've been telling my, my family because we used to have a a dotson i'll tell you guys a story in a second we had a dotson that she lived to like 
bro, like, I think she lived to 15 years old. And that dog was amazing. I'm not a dog person, okay? I'm really not. I'm not into dogs. I like cats. I, I, I'm not saying that I don't like dogs. I just don't want any pets because pets are like kids that never grow up. So whether cat, dog, fish, whatever, I'm not really into pets. And my family knows that. <laughs> so we used to have a dog and her name was Coco. She was a brown Dacian. And we, we found her in a Walmart parking lot in Tampa, Florida. And <laughs> we, we had her since 2004 or no, 2005, all the way to 2019. She was a little puppy running without a collar in Walmart. So we took her home and nobody ever claimed her. We, we tried to find uh, the owner. So she became like my little sister because when, when she came to our house, I was like 11. And I know it sounds crazy, but she passed away in my arms. I found her like, you know, she was taking her last breaths in my house and I picked her up and she took her last moments in my, in my arms. And my neighbors here in the condo, they have two Datsuns and there's one that looks exactly like Coco. And... I found that out like a day or two ago, like Saturday, I think. And I'm like, yo, that's what I'm missing. I, I don't feel lonely. I feel like I, I need companionship, bro. Like, obviously, I'm talking about my wife. I would love to have my wife. But who knows when that's going to happen or, <laughs> you know, what's what's going to come from that. But maybe I need to get a puppy is what I'm saying. But I, I, I'm not. I'm not a I'm really not a pet person. But anyways, I was been thinking about that because i'm always thinking about the state of my soul where's my present season how was my walk with god i'm always taking like a heartbeat spiritually and i finally was able to articulate it like your boys wants companionship like i'm not lonely in the sense that i feel like there's a hole that needs filling or anything like that but as i was praying about this i'm always praying to god i'm asking him like you know, help me speak to somebody, help me encourage them. And I think like, like, why don't we talk about singleness so much in the church? And, and, and I think the, the reason why it is, is because the mentality is that single people are supposed to be satisfied in the Lord. But what's crazy about that is that I've never understood that sentiment, nor that mentality in the church, because God himself created man not even that God created man. God goes on a creation spree in the book of Genesis and he creates. And on the sixth day, he creates man. Every day that he creates, he says, and it was good. And it was good. And it was good. But then when he gets to the man, he says, but it is not good for the man to be alone. So I don't know how we got to the point in the church that we just tell singles like, shut up and be single and be satisfied with the Lord because if you're not satisfied with God and your singleness then there's obviously something wrong with you you're sinful or you need to repent and then figure out how you need to be satisfied with the Lord not even God takes that approach God said it is not good for man to be alone so what did he do he rectified it he didn't say it's not good for man to be alone let me be his companion forever let me walk with him in the cool of the day no he made a woman from his rib so that she may be his companion to be his helper to execute the vision and the mission that he re received in being the steward over creation so whoever's out there man if you be feeling the way that i do just know that god sees you and god doesn't whatever echo you hear in the church that you need to shut up be single and be satisfied in the lord just read genesis chapter 2 so that you can know that that's not god's words those are the words of men and yes you should try to find satisfaction in the lord but there's nothing wrong with you if you feel that there's something missing in your life there's nothing wrong with you because you're single. There's nothing wrong with you because things didn't go your way in the timing that you thought it would happen. Because God is working things out and all these things will come to pass one day. And I really, <laughs> it was just beautiful the way that he confirmed that to me. Because yesterday, again, I was listening to this song and I just kept on saying that like absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I just was thinking about that. I recorded yet, uh, to 
Wednesday's vis video yesterday. And I was supposed to like talk about the song and the story about the church, but I totally forgot because I started getting into a vision God gave me on Friday. But this morning I wake up and I'm like, yo, I remember the song I was writing in my journal about it. And I decided to write a community post and like not even an hour later, God responded to me and I'm like, whoa, man, it's so beautiful how God will reward your obedience when you do what he asks you to do because he'll give you those reasons to worship him he'll give you those reasons to praise him like if you obey god and just listen to him for what he's asking you for he's gonna show you why and encourage you to continue to wait upon him so again whoever is out there i know it's like long-winded but i i just want to encourage you guys to start the week Right. And if you don't have this issue, whatever your issue is, you do have an issue. You have a desire and a longing for something. Just know that God is working on it. You may be single and you feel like you're called to singleness or maybe you're married and you are waiting for a child or maybe you already have children. You guys are waiting for a house or a car or finances, whatever it is. This this thing that I'm talking about is not restricted to singleness. Just know that God is working on the desires of your heart and yeah man like i i always think about that like denial creates greater desire where there's increased hunger there's increased appetite and again now absence makes the heart grow fonder and i'm i'm learning i'm like learning the state of my soul right now so it's beautiful to know that companionship is what i'm trying to i've been trying to articulate even though i've said it before is i don't think that's the same as loneliness because i don't feel alone i just feel like i'm ready to start doing life with somebody and um yeah man i i always think about that bro like god is gonna work on the desire of your heart and you know just continue to wait upon the lord and be encouraged and know that god is truly working on it and something that i talk about in the video for wednesday is start speaking to things as if now start to shift your mentality of thanksgiving not just thinking for the past and the present but think for the future as if now because god is the god of yesterday today and tomorrow he's the god of 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 he's the god of everything he's the god over time he's outside of time he's the first and the last the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega to him be the glory the honor and the praise the kingdom the power the authority everything is his so just know that that same god is the one that's working on these desires for you and if you could thank him like imagine that you start thanking him for the things that he promised you as if you already have them in your hands tangibly what type of faith would that take and when I say speak to things that are not as though they are, you're just simply walking in the character that you've witnessed your own father operate in because that's what God does. He, that's, what, that's what Abraham believed in, that he was able to call forth that which was not as though it were. And this is why you guys always hear me talk to my wife. Although <laughs> I've even had people comment, like, <laughs> it's funny because one of my old, uh, worship leaders she's from the bronx she lives in pennsylvania now she commented on one of my videos recently she's like you got married like commenting on the video and i'm like nah you just got to keep talking to things as if they exist now and that's why you know i i always do this i want you guys to see that so again if you're waiting for a spouse start speaking that into existence not that you have the power to do these things you don't have the power of creation but you have the power of thanksgiving you have the power of praise. You have the power of worship. So, you know, thank God for that job. Thank God for the car, the finances that you're waiting, the debt to be cleared. You know, the, the connections you need, the business, the spouse, all these things. Start speaking to those things because one day you're going to have it. And because you were already speaking in those things, when you have it, now you're ready to walk in it like like you've been here because <laughs> you've been there. You already was there. So, you know, for me, like speaking to that, my woman, my wife now, I hope that she really knows, man, how much I truly love her, bro. Like, 
how much I appreciate her, how much I'm proud of her, like unbelievably ecstatic and proud of her. And it sounds crazy, right? Like, but who doesn't want to hear that, right? Like if you love somebody and you hear them tell you that they appreciate you, that they are proud of you, I would love to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So I just do what I want to receive. So, man. Yeah. So start getting ready, guys. That's all I got to say. Start getting ready for what God has for you because who knows? That could happen at any moment. It could happen at any moment. And God is working on things that you don't even realize. So, But anyways, guys, let's get into the Bible study. Hopefully that little short sermon will encourage you as an energy shot for the rest of the week. trying to think if there's anything else that i needed to tell you guys i feel like there was but oh well let's go Alrighty, romans 15 <clears throat> excuse me romans chapter 15 <sighs> verse 14 so remember he was talking about in the first section about you know, unity within the church, praying for other individuals to be strong, and then his purpose in being a minister to the Gentiles. And then he's going to get into that more specifically now in this second section of chapter 15 of Romans. So verse 14, I myself am satisfied about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with the, all the knowledge and able to instruct one another. I feel like that's confirmation for what I just said about my wife, that I'm proud of her. You know what I mean? Even though he's saying satisfied. Oh, and this reminds me, the word satisfied, that's what I was going to mention with the whole singleness. When I said that, if you don't feel satisfied, don't think there's anything wrong with you, whether that's in your singleness, whether that's at church, whether that's in your service to God or whatever it is, because dissatisfaction doesn't indicate something being wrong. It just indicates, again, the hunger that is, you know what I'm saying? They, there's a there's a old saying that. um. I don't know how common it is in other places, but they'll tell you like somebody with ambition got their ribs touching, meaning they hunger so much. They know what it is to go a few days without meals. So that hunger, what it makes you do is it it pushes you to do things you otherwise wouldn't do. It moves you in a specific way that you wouldn't. So if you're not satisfied, don't think that, again, God is disappointed in you or whatever. Now, if you're not satisfied for the sake of being satisfied and you should be satisfied, that's something different. But if you feel an innate, inherent, intrinsic un dissatisfaction with either your life, your relationship with God, church, again, being single and all of those other things, don't think that that is for the purpose of god being disappointed it's that could be preparing you for what is yet to come so just keep that in mind and again like uh, i feel like 14 was confirmation of what i just said to my wife so that's pretty awesome i myself am satisfied about you or proud of you my brothers that you yourselves are full of goodness filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another this is the goal of the church man which i don't feel like is often focused on in the churches we need to be building people up to the point that they are full filled with knowledge so that they may be able to operate on their own to be able to instruct the next person um i think there's maybe i, I don't want to sound too much critique but there's too much dependence in the church and i think we need to be a little bit more independent in the sense that you still respect authority you still submit to authority but don't just wait around like my, my my old pastor he used to say this all the time don't wait for me to tell you something see a problem and fix it you know what i mean like don't just sit around waiting for somebody to tell you to do something get up and do something you see the floor is dirty go sweep go mop bro go take out that trash that you see is overflowing in the bathroom like take out the trash that's outside bro wash the windows you know dust the fans fix the chair that's been out of place for three services straight you see that the the wood board is missing on the on the 
back platform of this state fix it bro like you see need do something about it guys that's the that's maturity in christ verse 15 but on some points i have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by god to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God. What is he talking about in regard to work for God? He's talking about his ministry, of how he's building up these churches, how he's building up the Gentiles. Because remember, he calls himself the apostle to the Gentiles. <clears throat> All righty. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed. So it's not enough to just preach, guys. You got to do what you're preaching. For what is it worth to preach and not do anything about what we're talking about? Why, what am I wasting my time here for if I don't live what I preach? Like, I've never even, I've never even thought about it like that, to be honest. Uh, living what I preach. I, I never like that order of importance. I just preach what I live. And, and I feel that makes all the difference. I don't live with what I preach. I preach what I live, right? Because it's like if I, if I say I'm living what I preach, it's, it's just like this thing that is external and I'm trying to catch up to it as if it's a point in time or a succession of events. This is not a, a succession of events to me. This is my every day. This is what I live and breathe. This is what I contemplate from the moment that I wake up to the moment that I go to sleep. Every day is a new opportunity to either succeed or fail in the Lord, to, to deepen my relationship with God, to grow the intimacy that i have with the lord to to deepen that love man because i am absolutely and totally in love with god bro like absolutely like it's it sometimes it it concerns me because i don't know if i'm just crazy sometimes i feel delusional or what i don't know because <laughs> you know sometimes i feel like i'm on an island by myself but man Anyways, by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. Illyricum is basically like the opposite side of Jerusalem and its Gentile territory. Um, I don't know if you need... If you guys need to see this, but this is where Illyricum is. Okay, wait, how do I do this? Wait, that's why am I singing the Adam what Adam's family song? I don't even know why. Anyways, this is in Rome, right? Illyricum. And if you know where Jerusalem is. It's what connects Africa to Europe, basically. Um, not necessarily, but there's just this much body of water that separates it. So technically, yes, technically, no. Um, let me see if I could get another. I'm a visual person, so if I don't see stuff like this, I won't be able to. I won't be able to um, articulate it. I won't be able to process that in my mind if you could look at this picture on the right where you see the the i1 that's illyricum if you look to the right all the way to the right in the middle what africa's on the south that that whole piece that's on the bottom half that's africa the tip of africa and you know that egypt is in the corner and then excuse me then there's israel here palestine here and then it goes this way into Turkey. And then there's a little bit of body of water. And then there's Greece. And then that's Italy over there on the side. So between Greece and Italy is Illyricum. So what it's saying is from Jerusalem to Illyricum, 
that that's what he's basically saying so if you you actually know that's true because look at this uh he's talking to the romans right Illyricum is east of rome because if you see that part that looks like new jersey <laughs> on the side that's italy and rome is 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 in there like towards the middle of that piece um and then Jerusalem is on this side. So if you pay attention to the books of the New Testament, all of that from Illyricum, he's not mentioning Rome because he's talking to the Romans. I don't think there's any, maybe it would be redundant for him to say that. But let's look at this right here. Oh, I'm trying to click the wrong thing. That's the wrong screen. Uh, what the? Okay. You see this? This is a better picture. You see where it says Dalmatia? That is basically the area of Illyricum. Italia is to the left and then Sicily is that island on the bottom left. If you see there's Corinth, there's Ephesus, there's um, Thessalonica, all of that stuff. Ephesus is Turkey, by the way. Thessalonica is Greece. Achaia is Greece. Nicopolis, Corinth, that's all Greece. Um, so if you're paying attention to what he's saying from from Jerusalem to Illyricum, he's basically telling you this is what he has reached. Now, if you pay attention to the book of Acts, you will know that Paul's true desire was to go where? Where was Paul's desire to go? If we looked at this map, this is a good map. And the dark burgundy color, that burgundy color is Illyricum. That's, uh, this is a better map, actually. I like this even though it doesn't have uh, labels. So you would know that Paul's desire was to go to Spain. Now you would, a you would ask yourself, why would Paul want to go to Spain? If he starts in Jerusalem, he was on the road to Damascus, which Damascus is, I can't even point it because it doesn't show it. Right above Israel is Damascus. It's like right above Israel. In that middle piece to the right. So that he starts in Jerusalem. That's where the apostle Peter and James are the apostles of the main church, so to speak. It's the hub, if you will. Um, he starts there, but he's not trying to be a, uh, an apostle to the Jews because Peter and James already got that. Him and Barnabas, you know, eventually they split off. Because they come to a disagreement of who to take, where to go. Obviously, Paul goes with Silvanus, right? Um, not Silvanus, Silas, sorry. Silvanus is in the book of Acts and the book of Colos Colossians, I think. Anyways, the reason why this is so important, why Paul wanted to go to Spain so badly, is that everything that you're seeing here is basically all of the known world to them at the time. They don't have a single clue about anything else. Maybe Ethiopia, e Ethiopia is south of Egypt, um, and Ethiopia plays a, a major role, a major role, uh, not only in those times, but in the end times, Ethiopia is going to play some incredible roles. We won't really get into that. But basically, this is the known world. So in Paul's mind, he wanted to get to Spain so that he could say that he reached the entirety of the world. Remember, this is not the Internet age. Paul didn't have Instagram. He couldn't geotag where he was rocking the gospel and the evangelizing. You know, he didn't have Google Maps and all of that. They really didn't know. This is the extent of the known world at the time. So for Paul, this was extremely crucial that he made it to um to Spain, which you know you guys know is Spain and then Portugal's on the on the uh, neighboring country, Hispania, they become the major powers of the world eventually. Um, Portugal and Spain, which is incredible to think that the 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 peninsula of Hispania, where we get Hispaniola or Hispanics from, uh, they reach the entirety of the world. If you guys are ever interested in this dynamic, there are two sh two uh, forms of medium that I would like you to look at if you want to 
uh, number one is there's this movie by Martin Scorsese about the Portuguese and how the Catholics, um, because Portugal was Catholic and Spain was more Protestant. Um, no, they were both Catholic. I'm sorry. The English were Protestant. Um, the Catholics, they go and they go to Japan and stuff. It's a great um, movie to understand how at their time they thought that their little pond right in comparison to the whole world they thought they were the whole world until they reached japan and portugal ends up like trying to keep a secret with spain and it's just this whole thing so if you want to watch a movie about japanese christians and how catholicism or christianity got to japan and its importance there's a movie by martin scorsese called silence it's a masterpiece of 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 cinema and then there's a current show that's going on right now. If you can bear it, I don't know. Everybody has different convictions. It's called Shogun. Uh, it's about Japanese samurai and the the Portuguese and the Spanish establishing and trying to keep Christianity secret in Japan. But then the Protestants from England and London find Japan and you know, they didn't even know that it existed. It was just like a legend at the time. So if you can imagine, this is the type of thing that Paul was experiencing, right? We didn't have the known world. We didn't know the known world at all. Only the limited cranium, the imagination that we have, right? Anyways, I don't know if you guys find these things interesting when I talk about them. But anyways, let's get to the study so again that's martin scorsese silence and then shogun it's on hulu there's two more one episode comes out tomorrow the ninth episode i think and then the 10th which is the last episode comes out next tuesday so if you guys are interested check it out i think it's fascinating shogun is extremely well done um so consider checking that out if you can bear it i don't know what you guys again everybody has different convictions i don't know what you guys watch um, anyways, so that's his purpose in saying that from Jerusalem and all the way around to Illyricum, I have fulfilled the ministry of the gospel of Christ. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been laid, lest I build on someone else's foundation. Who is he talking about if not the 12 disciples? It's, it's oftentimes tradition to say that um, Thomas reached as far as India. Um, Thomas reached India with Philip. Um, uh, a lot of the a lot of the world kind of got ignored to the east. Now, why did God do that? It's a mystery to me to this day, because Paul and if I'm not mistaken, in the book of Acts, Paul and Barnabas wanted to go to Asia. They wanted to get to China, to the oriental part of the world. And imagine if they did. But I and I still don't know, like I'm always trying to figure out what is the mind and the will of God? Like, why does God do things that he does? <laughs> and it, I, I don't know, but. Because. For the majority of Japanese, South Korean north korean or korean in general because they weren't always split chinese korean japanese philippines they had no contact with the christian world for the majority of the christian church history now i i oftentimes wonder why that is um without getting too deep into it if you know the differences between the east and the west it's almost as as stark as is the as far as the east is from the west as different as the the sun is from the moon so is the east from the west um the west is independent the east is more interdependent they're more filial meaning family oriented um i think even more so than latinos are um now why did god i wouldn't say ignore but why did he not see it prudent for the majority of tr church history to not enter the likes of China and all these other places? I think he wanted them to develop on their own, to find the opportune time 
to enter that place knowing when was the moment of spark and think about this because if you think about it in today's times i always tell you guys the west is as 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 much as we like the lights and the glitz and the glam of the west that it looks like there's a lot of things happening which they are i'm not trying to take it away but it is nothing in comparison to what's happening in places where persecution is happening where they're asking you will you serve a will you deny christ or we kill you and your entire family there's no comparison like is is no comparison at all and if you pay attention to the way the spirit of the lord has been moving if you know history it started in jerusalem it goes instead of again that decisive moment that paul had the desire to go east god blows him west the spirit continues to go that way evangelistically gets to the new known world which again if you think about the the importance of the united states in the in the grand scheme of world history then you'll know how perfect it was that god founded this nation and i know it sounds crazy because you're like oh you're just a religious nut yeah god founded the united states yes he did <laughs> and i think that it should be I know we already have a United Nations, but the United States should really be called the United Nations because this is the only country that you could come to and still be your own culture in freely, freely. You know what I mean? You can't do that anywhere else where they're not asking you to assimilate to the culture. Um, but anyways, it goes to the United States, then it goes southward into Latin America. And now from Latin America, it's going to Africa and Africa has been on fire for a while, but I think that even from Africa, with all the things the, that's going on over there, it's now sparking into the Asiatic regions, and I think that was very intentional by God. And, the, and what I really think is happening is found in the book of um, Genesis, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe Exodus where God talks about until the fulfillment of the time of the Amalekites, he wasn't um, going to establish Israel, basically. And the point of that is, is the Amalekites were the giants. They were the ones that were in, in stark rebellion against God. God has a time for everything. I know we like to use that for Ecclesiastes 3. I even used it in my last video. But God has a time for everything. Right now, we're in the time of the Gentiles, and the Bible says until the fulfillment, we read it in Romans 11, until the fulfillment of the time of the Gentiles, we won't enter the eschaton. We won't enter that unveiling, the, the end time, even though we are in the end times, but what we consider the end times, until the fulfillment of the Gentiles, that's not going to take place, the return of Christ. Um, and I think all that's left in the world to happen is that asia would be set ablaze and that's what's happening with the spirit of the lord at this moment i i, I would like to get into the whole chinese thing the secret churches and all of that but when you see people uh, and i don't mean this with any disrespect you ever seen no, never mind. I'm not even going to say because it it's a bad analogy. I don't want to equate them to something like that. There was this video. This was from years ago. There was lug uh, luggages, maletas that had Bibles in it. And you see all these Chinese run to these Bibles and they're like ripping them out of the out of the, the, the luggages. And they're so desperate to have the word of God. And you would think that they were starved their entire life from eating a any single morsel of bread. Yet they're here so desperately desiring the word of God. We won't even go beyond the notification we get in the morning. You know what I'm saying? In the morning from the, the Bible app. We won't go beyond the verse of the day here in America. We, we, we have individuals who died simply to translate the Bible, just to translate it from Latin to English or, or from any other language to another language. People have died, burnt at the stake, and we won't even dare open that Bible. Can you think about that? And these people are desperate for Bibles out there. We won't even go beyond the sermon on Sunday, bro. Most people get their spiritual satisfaction and 
say they they hunger satiated on a Sunday, bro. And these people are desperate, dying, willing to lose their head. That's the difference that I'm trying to say between the East and the West. And what's happening in the West is, you know, where where success comes, a lot of things are birthed from that. A lot of beautiful things and a lot of negative things. And one of those negative things that I think is like, I feel like the church in America is largely complacent. And myself included, if I'm thinking about anybody in the East and the West, because golly, golly. Anyways, maybe I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I'm not and I'm not trying to poop on the West or anything. So let's just finish the last few verses. And thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where. All right, we read that. But as it is written, those who have never been told of him will see and those who have never heard will understand. This sounds like uh, the Ethiopian eunuch where uh, Philip asked him, do you know what you're reading? He says, I don't know what I'm reading unless somebody tells me. Right. And th And then again, when I think about God's plan, I'm always trying to discern his heart. What is his desire? What is his move? What is his vision? What is his plan? What are you trying to accomplish in this world, O Lord? How can I help you, O Father? And again, those who have never been told of him will see and those who have never heard will understand and when you think about how massive china is africa is obviously the biggest continent in the world and it's not even close but china as a singular um as a singular entity is massive there's there, there's so many people outside of the main places such as uh Shanghai, Beijing, um, all these places that are, you know, highly civil, not civilized, but populated, heavily populated areas. You know, obviously the gospel has gotten there, but there's these remote places that people just don't go to in the west of Africa, between Russia and the rest of China. Most of China finds itself in the east of china all the way on the other side because all of this area in china that is between russia and the east of china towards korea is, is not that it's mostly inhabited but it's almost un un what is that word inhabitable i don't know how to say that word but i think that god's plan is to get to those unreached places and yeah anyways anyways blessings god bless you guys so that's the end of romans chapter 15 does anybody have any questions in regard to what we've been going over or anything interesting that that i say that you want further clarification um paul's just basically getting to the end of his discourse with rome with the church in rome who he I don't think up to this point he has been to Rome. He hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't because the next section he's going to tell you that how much he longs to go there. But Paul, man, Paul is that dude. Paul is definitely that dude, man. Hey, thank you for the donation, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. I was going to look at something else, but I got a notification. I appreciate you guys. Thank you to everybody who has been donated to the ministry. If you would like to, we uh, have um, links in the description. So thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Um, can you do a recap? <laughs> We're at the end of the live. Uh, what would you? Uh, we we went over Romans chapter 15, 14 to twenty one. Um, I'm not trying to do an entire recap of the the live. I, I apologize. I mean, I can answer something specific, a specific question. Basically, what Paul is talking about here is how he was called to the Gentiles and how he feels he has fulfilled his mission from Jerusalem to Rome, which is Italy. He went in a reverse C shape and his desire was to get to Spain and he never got there because, as we know, Paul meets his end in Rome before Caesar. 
he never makes it to the end of the the end of the world in his mind so that's basically all that's going on there does anybody have any questions i mean i'll answer a specific question i'm not i'm just saying like <laughs> i don't mean to sound rude or anything you know but it's it's awesome you know like god has god is good man and he has a plan for this world i know that we um we we can't get too comfortable guys we can't get comfortable man um and i don't mean to bring this up because i'm not trying to start any discord or anything you guys well i don't know if you guys know what i believe about the rapture um i live my life like if there's not gonna be a rapture happening right those are my beliefs i don't i don't find precedence of it in the scriptures but I know a lot of people, they believe in it. And the reason why I bring this up is because we're talking about like the last days. I live my life as if I'm prepared to live as if there will be no rapture. And all that is described in Revelation, my eyes will one day see. You have to ask yourself the question, is your faith of the caliber to be able to endure the trials and tribulations of the book of revelation as a believer in christ and to my dismay to the it breaks my heart that when i say that i see the church in the west i do not believe the church in the west is able to withstand what the bible describes in the book of revelation i don't say this to scare you i don't say this to bring fear in your heart but i say this are you ready do you feel that your relationship reflects a degree so deep that you would be able to sustain the trials and tribulations in the last days? Do you know God well enough that if you never saw a word of the Bible again, that you will be able to maintain his promises deep in your heart? Would you really be able to part with your head from your shoulders to proclaim Christ? as your lord and savior and before you say yes how can you say yes i won't even address you people say yes i will die for christ but they won't even die to themselves they can't even pick up their cross and die to themselves but they say they will die to for christ beloved we have to stop acting like christians we need to stop playing church we need to start getting disciplined. We need to start following religion. Yes, you guys know I'm, you know my stance on religion. Religion is not our enemy, okay? Because when they start, look, there are practical reasons why you should learn how to fast. There are literally practical reasons. Fasting is not optional to the Christian. You should, in my estimation, you should at least fast once a week. At least, even biologically, it shows that if you can fast for 24 hours, one 24 hours, one day per week, that does so much for your health is not even funny. If you can fast 72 hours, it does like a whole cycle in, in, your, in your system, right? You're, you're in your physio physiological system. But beyond that, guys, when they start telling you, you can't buy food, right? Because who controls all the food sources? Do you know how to, do you know how to uh, work the ground? Do you know how to plant seeds? Do you know how to farm? Do you know how to do agriculture? Do you know any of those things? So if they shut down all your Target, your Starbucks, and all these other things, and they tell you, right, you can't eat. Unless you deny Christ, what are you going to do, beloved? You haven't fast. You haven't fasted. How do you know what it feels like to deny yourself in that way? Like, have you spent intentional time and in fasting and the practice of seeking the Lord in that way? Because I, I don't think that fasting has 
only spiritual benefits. It has physical benefits and one day it will serve a purpose. And I just say that with the thought of having the end times in mind, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Can you say that you will serve Christ when they ask for your, for your right hand? Give me your right hand or deny Christ. Right? If they're asking for family members, like, the, if we really get in deep about it, it's going to get there one day. It's going to get there one day. So I always say, I live, I, I, I live as if there will be no rapture. I hope for a rapture, but I live as if there won't be any. And I'm prepared to go through the tribulation. That's what I live my life like every single day. That's why I read that word. You could take that word from me, but you can't. You could take that Bible from me, but you can't take, you can't take his word from my heart. You could take it, but you can't take it from my heart. You cannot, right? If I never saw the Bible a day again in my life, it will bring me great distress. It will make me utterly depressed that I will never be able to see my beloved again in this life. But I have his image burned in my mind and in my heart. His imprint is on my soul. And that they can't take away from me. That they can't take away from me. Anyway, somebody put a comment here. I'm sorry. Let me see. I'm sorry. I don't know what this question is. Wanted to do CA in 2010. Oh, oh, the comment was cut off. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, wanted to do CA. I don't know what CA is in 2010. Wanted to do something else, particularly CS. I'm, I'm guessing CS means computer science or MBA, ma ma Master's in Business Administration in 2014 because I was too scared to face what is coming. Chose jobs which were easy and didn't study either. It's 2024 still. I'm going to tell you, you shouldn't be afraid to do anything in this life. Live your life. I'm not saying YOLO, you only live once because eternity is still eternity, beloved, and that fire still burns. Live your life with the fear of God, but not living your life with the fear of doing anything. I lived that as a child. I was so deadly afraid to even come out of my house. I didn't even want to forget coming out the house. I couldn't even come out the room. I was so deadly afraid of social interaction. So to live in fear, beloved, I wish that on nobody, man. I wish that on nobody, bro. So don't live in fear. But, hey, computer science maybe has served you. But even now, we're in a technology bust. Microsoft, Google, all these Giants, Apple, they're all lay, laying off thousands at the moment because technology is busting at the moment. And you definitely saved yourself from getting an MBA, the most overly saturated industry in the entirety of the United States. You might as well say you only graduated middle school than get an MBA with all due respect. And I know this is, <laughs> I'm not going to say, but I literally did <laughs> This is not, maybe this is not ethical, but I did somebody's entire MBA. It's like a two-year program. I did all their work. I did every single assignment. So I know what it takes to get an MBA. And you're like, wait, why did you do that? I'm not going to get into it. But for two years, I did, <laughs> I did somebody's entire MBA. And what is that MBA worth to that person? Nothing, because it has nothing to do with what they're doing today. That the college degrees, we have been sold a lie. I went to college because I just love the Lord. I love studying all these other things. Um, you know what I mean? Like MBA is is nothing that that thing don't even work. It ain't worth nothing. Trust and believe that it's the most oversaturated degree. It is simple economics, guys. Supply and demand. When there's too much supply, there's no demand. When there's no supply, there's plenty of demand. It's just simple. And what, where are we at now? Every, I can't believe kids are still going to college now. 
if you can't go to college without being debt free and you're guaranteed to get something afterwards, beloved, go become an electrician, go become a construction worker, go get a blue collar job because you're way better off doing that than trying to get into some corporate shill of a job. Like trust and believe it's not even worth it. Trust and believe it. Unless you're trying to be a lawyer or a doctor or anything like that, go be a police officer, be a firefighter. Well, not even a police officer because this country don't even respect cops anymore. Be a fire, fire, firefighter, go get a blue collar job, save yourself the money and the stress. CS means company secretary and CA is char chartered accountancy. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. I thought that was something else. I've always been, I always, I've always felt like a failure since childhood and 32. I'm still a failure. No, you're not. Come on, guys. No, you're not. I'm 31 years old. I, I'm 31. So just to show you that we're, we're right there in age, you're not a failure. And if anybody else feels that way, you've been sold a lie your entire life. Okay. We come where we, we come on the cusp, not even the cusp. We come after the generations. This is no fault of their own. This was just the, the surplus of abundance that they lived in. Previous generations could live on a single earner's income and buy a house and do all those other things. I know we love to complain about boomers and all of that. Stop complaining and you go get to work, guys. Like, let's stop complaining about stuff. Let's start solving problems because complaining don't do nothing. <sighs> You're not a failure because you're 32 years old, right? Unless you're living with your mom and you're on, you're you're not doing anything and you're just making your mom paying your bills. Well, maybe you're pushing it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Give your mom a break and get up out her crib. You know what I'm saying? But if you on your eighth year, you know of of of, of well, I don't know whatever medical school that hey do your thing, but golly, get out your mom's basement. You gotta feel like you're doing something. You're not a failure. There, who could be considered a failure with breath in their lungs? Like there's so many stories that, you know who's one of my favorite stories? She has inspired me to this day. God rest her soul. And that's Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou had a, an unfortunate childhood. She had an encounter with uh, an, a gentleman in her life that, that shut her down completely in her youth she used to sleep, not not sleep. She used to go underneath the, the foundation of her house and she would just sit there. She wouldn't speak at all. She wouldn't speak a word because of something that happened in the situation in the family. And she didn't want to snitch or say anything that happened. So she decided to be silent for for a large majority of her adolescence. And somebody told her, you should go check out the library. And what this woman did is since she didn't speak, she would not utter a word. She read almost every book in the, in the library. And this is one of the most articulate women to ever live, ever, ever, ever live. Bro, her poetry has changed has changed generations has changed the world bro one of one of the uh one of my favorite renditions of her poems uh i think it's called i smile or something like that it, i highly recommend anybody just look up a youtube video of her performing this at a at an auditorium and she talks about how she sits on the bus and she cracks a smile and the whole time she's given the sermon uh, the sermon it sounds like a sermon the poem she's doing this poem and she's smiling and as she's smiling she's talking about the fake smile that we give as humans and the mask that she wears the mask that she lives in and she's smiling and as she's given the, the the sermon she's crying like she starts crying in the rendition of the poem and it's so powerful if you ever heard that woman speak, she could command the attention of a thousand men in a room. Whenever she spoke, anything she ever had to speak, people listened. Why? Because of the time period that everybody told her that she was a failure, right? But as long as you have breath in your lungs, there's an opportunity that God is giving you. And it doesn't matter, like, what, what standards are you holding yourself to that you consider yourself a failure? 
this this like overreaching overachieving society that we have created in this capitalistic overemphasis of whatever here in the united states is really ridiculous the other day i was on the shorts on youtube and i see this kid that's like 12 years old and he's like I don't got time to go outside and he's in front of his computer. I'm day trading and I'm just doing all of this other stuff. I don't got 15 minutes in the day because I'm reading books and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. It's like, bro, go outside and ride your bike, kid. Go ride your bike, man. Go breathe some fresh air. Like, I don't know what standards we holding people to today. Like, I feel so bad for these generations coming up. Don't put that pressure on yourself. If you are serving God, you are making an effort. You feel like you are fulfilling some type of purpose in this life. Man, live your life. Live your life to the glory of God and in the fear of the Lord. You're not a failure because of whatever the expectations you're not meeting in the world. Like what what are you like what are we talking about here? You know what I'm saying? What are we talking about? <laughs> you're not a failure is what I'm saying. And you can always change your life. 32 I've always thought this, right? And I've realized this even more when I turned 30 last year. Anything before 30 doesn't exist. You don't even know who you are. You don't, I, I don't know if I want to eat Doritos with my sandwich or I want some salt and vinegar chips. Like, I don't know what I like, what I don't like before the age of 30. When you turn 30 years old, you have this much of a grasp on your identity. This much. So when you turn 30, in reality, it's year zero. And then every year after that is the true start of your life. Age one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. Age 30 is the beautiful year to get started on your life. Don't let nobody else hold you to standards that they don't live up to themselves. I've always made it a point to know people that... I, who, who was this? This is Theodore... I think it's Theodore Roosevelt who was famous... This man was famous, being the president, one of the most power, the, the leader of the free world, Theodore Roosevelt. If I'm not mistaken, it was him. No matter who he would deal with, he would make it a point, right? He would make it a point to learn everybody's name that he would encounter. The mechanic that wor he worked on his car, the, the, the janitor, any party that you would think is significant, he would memorize their name, right? He would memorize their name. And it wasn't like he memorized them in the moment. The next time that he would come to encounter them, he would greet them and engage with them as if engaging with the leader of, of another country. And, and that's what gives us true value. It's not your position. It's not where you find yourself in, right? That, that, that's not, like, who, who are you making feel important? That's what gives you value, right? It's not what job you have, how much money you make. That's superficial, man. Money ain't, no, ain't all that. Look at Jeff Bezos. Every time I see that man's face, I want to cry. That man looks so depressed. That man looks like he got no, he don't know what up from down is. He don't know what east from west is. He looks so depressed. You think money is going to solve it? Position, titles, none of that is going to resolve it. Bye, I still live with my mom and have a low-income job, but yes, thank you. Listen, the, the, if that's what it is, then that's what it is. You're, are, if you're a woman, hey, more power to you. Men don't have the same privileges of, of being able to do that because, you know, it's like you're a mama's boy. You still like, If you're living with your mom, you have a low-income job, it is what it is. Like, what, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? But don't beat yourself down. Don't, don't associate your value, your identity with your present situation. Don't identify with circumstance, right? You, you always hear the old adage, the, the wisdom. Don't make, don't make permanent decisions off of temporary circumstances, right? The first time I ever heard that was trying to take my own life. And I know that's a dark place to go, and I'm not going to go there th completely. But you got to be in a really low place to try to attempt against your own life. And what I've learned is there's nothing worth taking your own life for. Life keeps going. And when, listen, 
I, I had to tell myself this. When you're dead and gone, people are going to keep moving forward. And eventually your name will be forgotten. It's just the reality. That's the, that's the reality that I had to come to the conclusion of. And if that's the truth, then I might as well just keep on living. Like, I might as well keep trying to fight for these things. You know? Life is worth living. And that was before I knew God. So now that I know God, like, what? Beloved, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos recently, but just on the basis of you being a woman, that's a purpose in enough for you to continue forward. Being a wife, that's your calling. Your, being a woman is your calling. Being a wife is your calling. Being a mother is your calling. Being a daughter is your calling. If you're fulfilling any of those callings, beloved, you have value. Everybody has value anyways. It's called the Imago Dei in Latin. You are created in the image of God. So just know that. Your value is not tied to your situation. Your situation could change just like that. Don't let anybody put, put you down. And I don't know if you live in the United States or where do you live that you say that you still live with your mom. You have a low-income job. Listen, it... it if it wasn't for the Lord, I don't know where I would be. Maybe I would be living with my mom too. I don't know. Who knows? And I'm not saying that's a reflection of you. I'm just saying that that's probably where I, I am. I would have been, sorry. So if you're helping out your mother, you know, just just do what you got to do, man. Just do what you got to do. Don't let nothing stop you. The The spirit of, of, a, of a human being is indomitable. Is, is unbreakable. So you're a lot stronger than what you think you are. Continue to move forward and don't let nothing stop you. Ask God to give you a vision. Ask God to help you expand yourself. Isaiah 54 is, is a great place to start. Isaiah 54. I think that's a, a great place for you to start. So that you could see that God truly has a plan for you. And he could change anything at any moment. But anyways, guys, I have to chill. Because we already one hour and 20 minutes. I got to close here, guys. Um, I'll be praying for you. Hopefully, everybody who's connected here, you will pray for this individual as well. Because that's what this is all about, right? It's about lifting one another up and looking out for each other. So, Father God, we thank you in this day. We bless you, O oh Father. You are so worthy to be served, O oh Father. You are so worthy to be glorified. We praise you. We thank you for all that you are doing and everything that is yet to come, O oh Father. We thank you as if we already receive it, O oh Father. And we praise you. We thank you. I ask you for these individuals that are connected in this live, O oh Lord, if they feel like they are insignificant or don't have value, my Father. May they see you the way that they that you see them. Sorry, may they see themselves the way that you see them, O oh Father. Show them how you love them, O oh Lord, and how you care for them. You see beyond what the human being sees. They see the outward, but you see the inward, the heart of a man and a woman, O oh God. I pray that you would reveal to each individual their value. And you thought them worthy enough, O oh Lord, to die on a cross to endure the pain, the insufferable trials and tribulations that you did because of how much you loved us, O oh Lord. So I pray for these individuals, my God. Help them to see what you see in them, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, open our eyes. Amen and amen. So God bless you guys. Um, you know, be encouraged. I'm from India, and I, I really abuse her for my failures because i'm so stupid to move on okay i'm a coward but fine i will move on it's about time to start believing in god and working in life no that's not what i'm saying at all i hope you didn't get any of that from anything that i said please don't that's why i asked if you're in the united states you know what i mean because india is a different context than what we live here you know what i mean so don't don't 
your context is far different than what's over here, right? India has a, a, a whole different set of laws and the way that they deal with women over there could be way different than they do here. So don't think that anything that I'm saying that will make you feel any type of way is not relevant to you. The United States is a way different place than from over there. Um, but God has the ability to change your life in an instant. Don't let, don't let anybody convince you otherwise. God is, God is faithful to his word. And if he ever promised you anything, believe him for it. He could change your situation. I highly recommend you read 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 2 with Hannah. She was in a situation that I don't think many of us would have been able to endure. But because of her faithfulness and believing in God, God changed her life forever. And not just her life, but he gave us one of the first judges of Israel in the prophet Samuel. You could even say the first king if you would like to. Because in many respects, in many regards, Samuel was. God could change your life. Don't be hard on yourself. Believe in the Lord. And even if you haven't received the promise from God, he knows the desires of your of your heart. Trust in him and ask him to change your situation. I, I believe it's Psalm 51 where David says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging for bread. Claim the promises of God, beloved. Claim the promises of God. So anyways, guys, we'll be back tomorrow to finish the rest of... What is this? Roman 15. My brain be dead, guys. Sorry. I got to eat. I can't do. I, I, I know we went to an hour and 20 minutes, guys. I really got to limit it to one hour because this this is extremely exhausting. Like even my jaw, like my jaw sometimes locks after this. I'm not even joking. It sounds weird. Sometimes I can't open my jaw. It's so stiff. My throat be exhausted like. I, 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 I got to I gotta close it, guys. So tomorrow we'll be back. Hopefully you guys are, uh, um, you know, hopefully you guys are blessed, to say the least. So God bless you guys. Um, continue to glorify God. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 54, guys. Isaiah 54. Read that. Let me just make sure I'm talking about the right thing to tell you to read. I'm talking about extending your tents, right? Uh, excuse me. Let me just read it because I always get these things mixed up. Yep. 54. I really recommend you guys read that. Wow, God is faithful. I just saw that right now. Um, anyways, guys, God bless you. God bless you guys. See you mañanas. Peace. <laughs>